The sparrow's not worried about tomorrow or the troubles to come. The lily's not thinking about the seasons, the drought or the flood. The tree that's planted by the water isn't phased by the fire. So why should I be? Cause you take good care of me. Good to see you, church. Good morning. God bless you. I hope you're having a great day today. We are going to jump right in. This last week and this week, we've really been honing on uh, information of Babylon. End time Babylon, ancient Babylon, Tower of Babel, Harlot Babylon. All these things go together. And I pray that as we're studying through these details in the word of god it, it really is preparing yourself you need to be prepared because the danger of the seduction that is to come and the danger of the deception that is to come is far greater than men have ever seen before and we need to be prepared for this to remain faithful unto the lord i quoted this yesterday but the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. You need to be prepared to remain faithful unto the Lord. Let's pray. And then today we're going to talk about the danger of deception. Yesterday we talked about the danger of seduction. We talked about some truths uh, around the harlot Babylon. Today we're going to talk about the danger of deception and what comes after the seduction. The thing that precurses the seduction is the temptation. It's only seductive if it's tempting. And that's the lust inside of man. That is the temptation has its roots where seduction gains its power and is the precursor to the deception that draws men away from God. Father, we thank you. We pray you bless everybody under the sound of my voice. Let the word become wisdom revelation in the knowledge of your son. Spiritual seed sown, producing in our body, mind, will, and emotion transforming us by the renewing of our mind, conforming us to the image of Christ, growing us up in the measure and the stature of the fullness of Christ. God, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. We'll go with me to Revelation 19. We're just going to look at a couple verses today. And then we are going to talk about this danger of deception. So we'll start in verse 20. And the beast was taken... And with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, that which he deceived them, that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. Now that's powerful. We're not going to read any more verses. Uh, we'll reference something in Matthew 24 in just a moment. But that right there is powerful in and of itself. That when we looked yesterday at the danger of seduction, the seductive nature was the harlot. The fact that John would wonder with great admiration at the thing that he just saw destroyed. That could that I mean that right there should be a clue. If there is ever a clue when it comes to investigative work, when it comes to studying, when it comes to trying to understand something, John the Apostle. How great John is. We we know how great John the Apostle is. I mean, he was exiled to the Isle of Patmos because they couldn't kill him. And there he still worshiped God, was in the spirit on the Lord's day, saw Jesus in full glory, the message to the seven churches. He saw seven seals, seven trumpets, seven vials, remnant of Israel, antichrist, false prophet, devil. I mean, he saw all of it. He even saw the father on the throne in Revelation chapter four. Yet, with all of that truth, Revelation 17 comes and he still wonders with great admiration when he sees the harlot. That should be a clue how seductive this really is. 
You need to be aware of that. But that seductiveness is what is a precursor to deception. Men become deceived. Men can become deceived without seduction. But what is seductive is what comes before the actual deception. It's almost always that way. I wouldn't maybe I wouldn't say always, but I would say probably 95% of the time. The reason why people get deceived is because of first being led away by the seductive nature of it. Now, the harlot Babylon rides upon the beast, rides upon the Antichrist, and then of course, later on, the ten kings burn the harlot. The religious system, of course, the Antichrist still runs the city of Babylon. And then uh, eventually, they uh, Babylon, the city is destroyed and the Antichrist also. But the harlot is advanced by the Antichrist because that is what defiles the conscience. If you go and you read in Revelation, or I'm sorry, Romans chapter 1, there is a progression of which men go farther and farther and farther away from God. And that seductive nature of sin, fornication specifically, which leads to spiritual harlotry, takes men farther and farther and farther away from God and to the point they ultimately make a decision to denounce God or even if they weren't following God to worship the Antichrist. Because what the deception becomes is the beast and the false prophet, the beast and the other beast, the Antichrist and the false prophet together wrought miracles. They move in power to deceive the people that take the mark of the beast. So the people that take the mark of the beast are deceived. But the reason why they're deceived is because they first bought into the seductive nature of the harlot, which was the precursor and the forerunner to the Antichrist. So it's important to understand those details before we move any farther forward. To understand that, yes, it is deceptive. And there's a big danger in the deception. But before you can have dangers of deception, there is dangers of seductions. I mean, there's there's a seductive danger that most people are not aware of. In the church today, I hear it all the time. I would never worship the Antichrist. I'll never take the mark of the beast, yet you participate in adultery. You participate in harlotry, sex outside of marriage, and drunkenness, and drugs, and alcohol, and all these things. Those lead you farther and farther away. Well, it's just a little bit of alcohol. Oops, I slept with this woman. Oops, I did it twice. And it's taking you farther and farther away from God. Holiness is not an option. It's a standard. It is a requirement of the believer. And the danger is that the seduction will lead to outright deception. Those that take the mark of the beast are ultimately deceived. They're deceived first. I'm not going to put this on the screen, but you can read this on your own. When Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24, he said, Take heed that no man deceive you. Many will come in my name and say that I am Christ and shall deceive many. And even in Luke chapter 21, Jesus said, Let not yourself be deceived. Many people will come and say, I am. Now, if you read in the King James, it says, I am Christ. But the word Christ is an italicized because that was added into the gospel of Luke just to make it make sense. But people will come and literally say that I am not, not I am Christ, but I am. Well, why is that important? Well, the name of God in the Bible, God says, I am that I am. I am, you know, that, that, that is truly the name of God. So when somebody will come and say, I am, they are not only declaring themselves like Matthew says to be a Christ, but they are actually declaring themselves to be God. Now, this is talking about false Christs and false prophets that come before the Antichrist, but its ultimate fulfillment is the Antichrist. And the reason why I wanted to look at Matthew 24 and Luke 21 for this contextual purpose is to understand what a false Christ is actually promoting. Now, ultimately, there will be people that say, I am. I'm God. I'm here and you worship me. Undoubtedly, there are going to be people that do that. And we even see that happened in a lot of a lot of times in a lot of places, especially with some serial murders and um, 
I mean, some some really bad stuff that that uh, cult like leaders would lead their people to do tremendous atrocities. I mean, killing of people, raping, murder, or even all of them dying, making some death pact, and all dying at the same time, and just crazy stuff. You know, and, and it's it's very sad because a lot of lot probably most or all of them are uh, they're in hell right now. And that's terrible. We hate that. We want them to get born again and not be deceived into these types of things and following the devil. Because that's what it is. It's just the devil. Um, but it happens all the time. And it happens because people will say, I am Christ. Now, in the church, at least, when we talk about being Christ, we talk about Jesus Christ. You know, Jesus is his name. Christ is not his last name. You know, sometimes we think Jesus, first name, Christ, last name. No, Jesus Christ is, that's not his name. His name is Jesus. But Christ is not a last name. Christ is a title. And the word Christ itself actually means the anointed one. Meaning I am anointed of God. And being anointed of God gives you uh, special uh, standards, responsibilities. I'm anointed of God to do these miracles. I'm anointed of God to move in this power. I'm anointed of God to lead you into the best way. I am anointed of God so I know what's best for us to do. Follow me. That is the danger of the false Christ. Mentioned in Matthew 24, Luke 21, but ultimate in the in the in the Antichrist. This is where deception has power. And this is where it's very dangerous. When you look at the seduction that comes first always lead to God. There are no standards. There are no morality. Laws begin to change. Killing of Christians is legal. Sin is okay. Theft is okay. Adultery is okay. All these things become okay. All of the evil is now legal. You can just do any of it with no consequence, no fear of consequences, even maybe even promoted and advanced with money. I mean, it's going to be very bad. I don't want to go into all of that really great detail, but you need to have some type of context for this to understand that there's just going to be worldwide seduction and all nations and all kings participate in it. So it's going to be on the face of the whole world. America, Brazil, Germany, India, China, Russia, everybody is going to be in the same exact position of participating with the harlot. And there's going to be this huge seduction taking place when it comes to morality for many years you know it wasn't okay for gay marriage and then all of a sudden gay marriage is legal and now people are like oh it's not going to be anything else just gays getting married well now gay people get married transgenderism and then just it's exploded it's it and it's terrible it's not good it's killing people and i mean even with the way they're mutilating kids with these surgeries and these hormones and these drugs, I mean, it's terrible. It, it is 1,000% ungodly. It's ungodly. It's from the pit of hell. And, and a lot of people recognize how bad it is now, but it's going to get far worse before the Lord Jesus returns. You need to understand that. Maybe it gets a little better here and there, but ultimately the trajectory is 100% evil and 100% good at the same time. Wheat and the tares rise. But with this legal, this legality of where sin and adultery and immorality and ungodliness and all these things become legal, murder will be legal. With that type of seduction on the earth, it pays the way for somebody to rise up. Now, it says in the book of Daniel, when transgressors reach their fullness, not just sinners, but outright rebellers against God, people that will never repent when that is full. But you got to think when all of these things are happening on the earth and then you have the outright persecution of the Jewish people and all of these things are happening and then a man rises up and that one man brings peace to the Middle East. He stops all the war, confirms this covenant of peace. And the next thing you know, Israel's building the temple. The daily sacrifices are happening again. There's peace. There's no more war. Everything seems to be going great. And this man says, I have the way, I have the plan, and he's moving in power, and he's making all these things work. And there will be people that will be saying, 
It must be God. He must be the way. He must be the one that is anointed to lead us into the place of peace and, and prosperity on the earth and love and goodwill towards men. That's the deception. When outright sin becomes legal and immorality and ungodliness reaches its height, and then a man comes on the scene and says, I can make peace in every area. People will say it must be God. And that right there is what, when it says, I am Christ, it's not saying I'm Jesus. He'll say, I'm the way to lead it. Look at what God is allowed. Look at who God is, and I must be better than God. That's what the Antichrist will do. Those are the types of things he will say. That in the middle of the seduction, will be the ultimate deception to cause people to follow him and, and then eventually to commit the abomination of desolation. I brought the peace. I did all this. I did all this. Look at all these great things. Now worship me or die. I mean, that's what's going to happen during the abomination of desolation. And because people are so far away from their heritage, the religious heritage, well, we're already this far. I can't go back the people will end up choosing the Antichrist. So the danger of seduction and the danger of deception are not just some small things that are going to take place on the earth. They are the ultimate fulfillments of what will take place through the harlot Babylon into the Antichrist system and, and, and Antichrist worship. But the seduction is what is the precursor. It's the forerunner to the deception. You got to take these things all the way back to the root to understand. It's the lustful nature of man. Without the born again experience, without the spirit of God living on the inside of them, and without sanctified, without being sanctified, without making yourself holy, renewing the mind, transforming the body, getting free from sin and living holy, without that happening, temptation arises because of lust. And, to, and seduction has power because of temptation. It's not seductive, it's not tempting. And it begins to lead men little, little more, little more, little more, little more, farther and farther and farther into sin. And because the seduction is so great and it's so tempting, it's, it's farther, 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 farther. And to the next thing you know, you're so far into sin. And then all of these problems happen on the world and a man rises up and says, I have the solution, and it seems to work. Now, it's a temporary prosperity. It's a, it's, a, it's a deception because it's not real, but it seems to work on the surface. And people say, well, that must be God. Of all these other things that are happening, this must be God, and they will choose to follow this man. He must, he must have the way. It must be true. And then eventually that man will rip his mask off and show himself to be a beast and say, worship me or die. And people will be like, he's, he's been this successful so far. How, how could I deny his success? He must have the victory. And people will follow him, even though it's declared in the word of God that he will ultimately be destroyed. And this is not just people of the world. This will even be seductive to the church. And a lot of people will be deceived. And the reason why they are, is because they have a lack of knowledge. They don't know it's coming. And what you don't know will destroy you. You have to prepare yourself spiritually to not be seduced, to not be deceived, to stand firm and holy no matter what comes to the earth. Father, bless these people in Jesus' name. I give you all the glory. Amen and amen. Church, I love you. God bless you. Have a great day, and we'll see you tomorrow. The sparrow's not worried about tomorrow. Oh, the troubles to come. Not thinking about the seasons, the drought or the flood. The tree that's planted by the water isn't faced by the fire. So why should I be? Cause you take good care of me.
The sun's not worried about the winter Cause soon it will pass The light's not thinking about the darkness Or the shadows 